Hello everybody again. So in this video, now we're going to look at how to use Microsoft uh, Excel to do tests on a, a single population mean. Now, as you may know from your previous studies, from watching other videos, there's two types of tests that you might do on a single population mean. You might do a Z test or you might do a T test. And the difference between these is that a Z test you would do if sigma is known, you know what the population standard deviation is, you would do a T test if sigma is unknown, in which case you would be using the sample standard deviation and concerning yourself with degrees of freedom. So these types of tests are actually quite straightforward to do using Excel. We're not even going to use the descriptive, uh, sorry, the data analysis tools that we talked about in the previous video to do a single population hypothesis testing on means. We're just going to use a simple command in a specific Excel um, cell. So let's just get into it. Here I'm using the same data set that I used in my previous video on descriptive statistic. Again, no context, no problem. We're just looking at how to get the results that you might need. We're not giving any discussion here on interpretation or, or what the results may or may not mean. Okay, so here I've got my five samples. Here we're going to perform Z tests. I'll produce another video where we'll talk about T tests. It's fantastically similar, but I don't want to make my videos longer than they need to be. So for a Z test, what we're going to use, I'll come down here below this first sample. The command that we're going to use is equals Z dot test. And I'm going to open a bracket. And as soon as you open a bracket on an Excel command, it tells you the arguments that it needs. What, what are the inputs that it requires? Now, before I go on any further here, let me just point out that you can do Z test. Notice there's no dot and I get exactly the same thing. There are in many cases, two versions of the commands. There's this one Z test. There's this one Z dot test. In some cases, the two commands are identical. In other cases, there's some small differences. And it has everything to do with backwards compatibility to previous versions of Microsoft Excel. I'm going to try to stick to the newest commands. So here, this is the Z dot test command. Now it's asking me here for my array. This is the sample. So here, this would be my sample right here. The next thing, whoops. <clears throat> The next thing that it wants is it says X. Now that can be confusing because I know that X specifically X bar is commonly used to denote a sample mean. Well, that's not what we want to put here where Excel says X. That is actually our hypothesized mean. What is our hypothesized value for this test? So again, I don't have a problem that I'm working with here. I'm just going to make up numbers because the focus of these videos is on process. So I'm going to look at my data and think, okay, maybe my hypothesized value is 30. Okay. Now the next one that it needs is Sigma. Now notice Sigma is in square brackets. When you see those square brackets, what that means is that that piece of input to that argument is optional. And this is what distinguishes a Z test from a T test. Again, I'll do a separate video, but I'll tell you right now, the only difference is that for a T test, we just leave this blank and I would just close that bracket. Now I know it still says Z test, but by not inputting a Sigma, it's going to use the sample standard deviation. And therefore it's going to give you the results for a T test. Now for this video, we'll do a Z test. So here I'll put in a comma. And again, you would be given a standard deviation for the population in your assignment in your problem. I'm just making up numbers here. Let's say it's eight. Okay. Close that bracket and I hit enter. Now here I have a number 0 0.76. 
One of the challenges that we sometimes face using any software for statistical analysis is that it doesn't necessarily know what I'm doing. It just spits out the results that it's, it's programmed to spit out for any given command. Now, you know better, you know that there are multiple different types of tests available. If I'm doing a test on a single population mean, well, I might be doing an upper tail test where I'm testing to see if my sample appears to be too large to have come from some assumed distribution. And here's that hypothesized value, right? In my Excel example, I'm assuming just some value of 30, right? That's what I've put in for that value. So we might have an upper tail test I might have a two-tailed test, in which case my alternative hypothesis is that it's not equal to some value. Or I might be doing a lower tail test, where I'm testing to see if it appears too small to have come from some assumed distribution. Now, the results that I want for the test are specific to the test that I'm performing. Whether you're using a critical value approach or a p-value approach, you need to know, am I doing an upper tail test, lower tail test, or a two tail test? Because if I'm doing an upper tail test, my critical value is gonna be in the upper tail. If I'm doing a, a, a lower tail test, it's gonna be in the lower tail. If I'm doing a p-value approach, that p-value has to come from the appropriate tail. Upper tail test, the p-value comes from the upper tail, and so on. So when I go into Excel and I get this command, well, okay, I know I'll tell you this command is giving me a probability, 0.76. We need to know what probability is that. In this case, this is an upper tail probability. And the way that we can confirm that, and this is helpful in case you're ever working on your own and you're not sure what the result is that you're being given, if I just click on this f of x up here, it gives me a little bit of information about that command. And here, if I just lean out of the way, returns the one-tailed p-value of a z-test. Well, not, not really, because it doesn't know what kind of test I'm doing. It doesn't know, actually, the p-value. It's giving me a one-tailed probability but if it's a p-value, you have to know what kind of test it is, right? To, to get the appropriate probability for that. So, okay, I want a little more help. So I'm gonna hit more help on this function, okay? And so here now I can see, okay, z-test returns one tail p-value, not really a p-value, probability. And here it says the command returns the probability the sample mean is greater than the average. So here this is telling me that this is an upper tail probability. It's only a p-value, therefore, if I'm doing an upper tail test. So if I come back here and I see, uh, okay, if I have a value there of 0.76, and that is an upper tail probability, well, it must then be this area here, and of course, this area would be equal to 0.5, right? Because the area under that curve is equal to one. So if that area is 0.5, and that probability that it's given me is 0.76. So it must be something a little larger than that. Maybe it's somewhere over here. And so there's some Z value. We'll figure out what that Z value is in just a moment. But that command, that Z test command, has given me that piece of information, that the upper tail probability is equal to 0.76. Is that my p-value? If I'm doing an upper tail test, yes it is. And I'm done, I don't have to do anything else. But what if I'm doing a lower tail test? What if this is my test formulation here? Well, if that's my test formulation, then this, would be my p-value because the p-value for a lower tail test must come from that lower tail of the distribution. And if I'm doing a two-tail test, well, as you know, we need to multiply some probability by two to get our p-value. So which is that going to be? Is it going to be this value that I multiply by two or this value that I multiply by two?
Well, we know the p-value must be less than 1. And I don't know yet what this one is. We'll get it in just a moment. This one here, 0.76, I can't multiply that one by 2 because then I'll have a probability greater than 1. That is not possible. So let's go back into Excel and get these probabilities. So what I know now is that this is an upper tail probability. If I want a lower tail, if I'm doing a lower tail test, this is going to be equals. And again, every time you enter a command into a cell, it starts with equals one minus, and then I'm going to click on this cell to provide that cell reference. And there it says 1 minus 0.76 is 0 0.24. And so here I, I now know we probably could have done that calculation without Excel. There we go. We've got that lower tail probability of 0.24. So I've got my upper tail value. If I'm doing an upper tail test, there's my p-value 0.76. If I'm doing a lower tail test, my p-value is 0.24. If I'm doing a two tail test, well, I need to multiply the smaller of those two values by two to get my p-value. Now, again, there's always multiple ways that we can do things. I could just come in here and say, okay, I want my, my two tail value equals, well, this has to be two times that 0.24. So I might be inclined just to go like this. I'm just gonna reduce our decimal places here. And that's fine. That works here. But if you're doing a problem like the one that I've got uh, in front of us, I'm doing the same test, I guess, five times across these five different samples. Well, I'm gonna to wanna, to, you know, shortcut this a little bit. And I highlight these and when I put the cursor over that little square, see how it changes little crosshairs. Now I can click and drag this across. And now we can see what happens. So here I've got all of the upper tail probabilities. If I'm doing an upper tail test, those are my p values. Here I have lower tail probabilities. If I'm doing a lower tail test, those are my p values. If I'm doing a two tail test, well here I have two to, oh, well what's this? We can't have p values greater than one. Something's gone wrong. And it's because in this command, I've just said multiply the lower tail probability by two. That worked here and that worked here. But over here, well now the smaller of those two probabilities is the upper tail. So that doesn't work. So what I might do here is instead of just picking one, I'll just say, two times the minimum. And now just let Excel determine what is the smaller of those two values. And now when I drag that across, you'll notice these three updated because now the minimum value is that upper tail probability, okay? So here we have more than you need for whatever problem or assignment you're working on because all I want is a p-value. If I'm doing an upper tail test, all of this is a waste of time, right? Because if I'm doing an upper tail test, those are my p-values there, I don't need anything else. If I'm doing a lower tail test, well then this really is just an intermediate step that I used to get to here. But when I report my results, in my assignment, if you're working in Microsoft Word, you're gonna put those results into your Word document. Well, I'm not going to include these because those are just an intermediate step in the calculation. These are my p-values for that lower tail test. If I'm doing a two tail test, these are my p-values. I'm only going to include in my assignment those values that are relevant, not any of the intermediate stuff, okay? So let's say I'm doing a, a lower tail test. So these are therefore my p-values, okay? Again, I'm just making it up as I go here. If you're doing an upper tail test, you would relabel the upper tail values as your p-value, okay? So these are my p-values here. I might be inclined to make this into a nicer little table. So I'm gonna paste those as values. There's my p-values. Now, 
you might also be required to include the test statistics as well. Because what I have here are just the p-values. And so if you want the test statistic, you can input the formula and calculate that test statistic. Or I can use this command norm.s.inv and this will give me the z value that corresponds with my probability. Now, you have to be a little bit careful because this command is going to read those probabilities as a lower tail probability. And that's fine for what I'm working with here. If I'm doing a lower tail test, these are all lower tail probabilities. So I'm gonna input that probability and this command gives me that test statistic that corresponds with that lower tail probability. So here, if I just come back, that gave me a value of negative 0.7. So what that means here is that this test statistic was negative 0.7. Now this can be a little bit tricky because what if I was doing an upper tail test and instead of picking 0.24, I picked 0.76. Well, now it's giving me a positive value, but we already know that command, that Z test command gives me an upper tail probability, right? That was an upper tail probability of 0.76, which means our test statistic must be negative, which now we know it is negative, negative 0.7. But when I input that, into this norm as inverse, it reads that as a lower tail probability, so it's giving me a corresponding upper or a positive test statistic. It's a little bit confusing. So here I'm doing a lower tail test. I know my test statistic is in the lower tail. It must be negative. Sometimes you might have to be careful and adjust the sign. It's not the end of the world, but something to be careful of. If I did a two-tail test, then I'm gonna select that two-tail probability, but remember this is a probability that's been multiplied by two. So to get the corresponding test statistic, I would need to divide that by two. And you'll notice I'm always getting the same value, right? Because that test statistic, as we have already determined, is negative, what's happening here? It is negative 0.7. And so no matter what command I use, certainly I should always get that same value, okay? So there's my test statistic is negative 0.7, negative 0.7. Let's come back up here, select my p-value, oops. And, and it's not going to cooperate. I want this value here, good, good, okay. Now I can copy that over and we are good. Now I've got a nice little table. If I want, I can take these labels. I'm using control or in my case on my iMac, command C to copy and paste is command V to paste. So there I've got a nice table of my results that include both my p-value and my test statistic. Okay, so that's it for getting your results for a z-test. I'll do another quick video, go through exactly the same thing to show you how to get results for a t-test. I'll use the same data. In fact, I'm gonna leave all of these results here and so we can, we can see what they look like when we uh, use the sample standard deviation instead of uh, a known population standard deviation. Okay, thank you all for watching. I hope that that was helpful. Okay, bye-bye.